welcome to my kitchen where every week I get to do something special and it involves baking. Has anyone ever made bread before? So this is my bread that I just whipped together. It involves lots of different ingredients and then I have to start kneading it with my hands a bit until it gets into this nice little dough form and it's very, very fun. So I do this about every week to make some homemade bread. So I just finished making it and now it has to rise. So I have my handy dandy towel here and I place it over top and then see, then I just put it on the counter and I wait for an hour. And then in an hour I come back and the dough will be about double the size. And then I have to divide the dough into two and then put it into two different loaf pans. And then I put the towel over those loaf pans again. And then I have to wait another 30 minutes. So that's a full hour and a half of waiting. And then after those 30 minutes, I take the towel off. I put those bread pans, bread loaves, uh, into the oven and then when they're in the oven they have to bake for another 30 to 40 minutes and so total time it's like two plus hours just to make a loaf of bread well two loaves of bread two plus hours what do you think I do during that time when I wait and wait and wait for the bread to rise do you think I just like sit and twiddle my thumbs or like hang upside down off my couch or like do nothing no, that's silly. I wouldn't waste that time. I'm gonna do something productive. So what we're talking about today, while we wait for my bread to rise over here, is we're talking about how when we wait, we can remember what's true. Hmm, when we wait, we can remember what's true. What does that even mean? Okay, let's hop over to our monthly song and do a little bit of dancing because I'm sure we have to get some energy out. That's a fun way to wait together. And then we're gonna go hop over to our Bible story and hear what's going on and see what that means. When we wait, we can remember what's true. And then by the time you come back, hopefully my bread will be ready and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, get on your feet and let's go dance together. Sometimes it's hard to wait for Oh 
What are up, my friends? It's me, Graham. And today, I'm serving up a delicious dish that's gonna make you jealous. Safety first. Double chocolate chocolate chip cookies. Mmm. Mm. Taste test time. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm not gonna eat these now. They're way too hot. I'm gonna have to wait to enjoy this chewy, gooey deliciousness, which means I'll need patience. Patience is waiting until later for what you want now. It'll be a challenge to wait, but I will do it. Do you smell that? Well, no. You wouldn't. <laughs> so, let me try and describe the smell for you. Imagine you're walking along a beach made entirely of chocolate. The chocolate ocean is waving nearby. And as you breathe in, the air is a warm chocolate breeze. That's what it feels like to be in the presence. These cookies! Maybe just one bite. No! No cookies! Oh, I've gotta think about something else. Light, vegetable oil, mannequin, crock pot. Cookies. No! Ah! <laughs> Time to put these away. There. Now it will be easy to wait. I can still smell them. In today's story, we'll hear about a group of people who are finding it very hard to wait. And they knew better. I'll be here when you get back. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Exodus, chapter 32, verses 1 through 35. For hundreds of years, God's people lived as slaves in Egypt. They cried out to God, and God rescued them. He led them through the midst of the Red Sea to freedom in the wilderness. And that's where he showed his love and care by providing bread from heaven and water from solid rock. Three months later, God led his people to Mount Sinai, where they camped at the foot of the mountain in the desert. Moses was called to by God from the mountain. Say to my people, the Israelites, you have seen for yourselves what I did to Egypt. You saw how I carried you on the wings of eagles and brought you to myself. Now obey me completely. If you do, then out of all the nations, you will be my special treasure. Moses shared God's word with the people. We will do everything the Lord has said. God called Moses to meet with him on the mountaintop. Moses spoke to the elders of the Israelites before he left. Wait here until I come back. My brother Aaron and Hur will stay with you. Anyone who has a problem can go to them. Don't sweat it. We got this. No one can come up. The mountain is holy. Noted. I'll see you soon-ish. Have fun storm in the mountain. As Moses and his assistant Joshua began to climb the steep slopes, the glory of God settled on Mount Sinai like thick cloud and burning fire. I will give you stone tablets. They contain the law and commandments I have written to teach the people. Moses stayed within the cloud on top of Mount Sinai, talking with God for 40 days and nights. Meanwhile, back at the camp, the Israelites were growing restless. I'm so like, over this desert camping thing. Yeah, that Moses seems kind of unreliable to me. Yeah, what if he's making up all the God stuff? You know, besides the cloud and the Red Sea and food from heaven and all that. Yeah, he's certainly taking long enough. 
Hey, Aaron, where's your brother? Aaron shrugged and pointed to the cloud that hovered over the mountain. Uh, uh, you know as much as I do. We need someone to really take charge. A god we can see, a god who will lead us. Moses may have brought us out of Egypt, but he's just disappeared. Poof. What are you going to do, Aaron? Aaron was tired of the people's complaining, so he buckled under pressure. Ha <laughs> uh, well, uh, give me all your gold jewelry. Aaron took all the gold the people brought him and melted it down. Then he shaped it into the form of a golden calf. Israel, here is your God who brought you out of Egypt. It's like so shiny. Well, well, when Aaron saw how excited the people were, he built an altar in front of the calf. Tomorrow will be a feast day. So all the next day, the Israelites brought sacrifices to honor a golden calf made out of their own jewelry. The people ate, drank, and danced wildly in front of the statue. Who wants to walk like an Egyptian, huh? Not me, we just got out of there, thanks to this amazing calf. Back on the mountain, in the midst of the cloud, God spoke to Moses. Go down. Your people you brought up out of Egypt have become very sinful. They have turned away from what I commanded. Heartbroken, Moses and Joshua made their way back down the mountain. Moses carried two heavy stone tablets covered with the laws God had given. The two men stopped in their tracks. Wait, is that the sound of war? It's not the sound of winning or losing, that's singing. <sighs> Moses and Joshua picked up their pace, scrambling down the mountainside. As they approached the camp, Moses saw the golden calf, dazzling in the sunlight. The Israelites danced wildly around it. Inconceivable! Moses was so angry, he took the stone tablets and hurled them to the ground. Stop! Stop this at once! The music and dancing stopped. Moses marched right through the crowd, right up to the golden calf. Aaron tried to sheepishly duck away, but Moses spotted him at once. What did these people do to you? How did they make you lead them into such terrible sin? Okay, don't be angry. You know how these people are. They, they said, make us a god to lead us. And? And then they gave me their gold jewelry. And? And I threw it into the fire, and out came this calf. <sighs> Aaron couldn't look his brother in the eye. They both knew the true story. Why didn't you wait for me? The people are running wild. We've, we've become a joke to our enemies. Moses toppled the golden calf into the fire to burn. Then he ground the golden calf into a fine powder and scattered it on the water. Drink it, all of you. This is hard to drink. Oh, my stomach feels downright awful. God helped his people over and over, but when they had to wait, they forgot his goodness. They chose their own way. And the consequences weren't so golden. I have a confession to make. I didn't eat the cookies! I had patience! I have another confession to make. Sometimes I don't have patience. No, sometimes I'm more like the Israelites in the story. I trick myself into thinking I can't wait for what I want. Have you ever done that? Have you ever eaten a snack when you weren't supposed to because you couldn't wait until dinner? Have you ever found the secret hiding place for presents because you couldn't wait until your birthday to find out what you got? A lot of us have done those things even though we know better. Maybe instead of tricking ourselves into thinking we can't wait, we can remember what's true. Instead of eating that snack you're not supposed to, remember it spoils your appetite at dinner time. Instead of sneaking around and looking for presents, remember how happy it makes others when they surprise you. And if you're waiting for something big, some pain to go away or sadness to end, remember what God has done in the past. 
Remember his miracles. Remember his son, Jesus, who died on a cross for us and who came back to life in three days. Ask God to help you control what you think. Here is the one thing to remember today. When you have to wait, remember what's true. It sounds easy to control what you think, but really it takes practice. Start now and who knows? Someday you may find yourself on a chocolate beach near a chocolate ocean feeling a warm chocolate breeze. Ew! Chocolate seagull. Well, I don't think I'm hungry anymore. All right, welcome back. So in lickety split time, my bread is ready. And I've already cut it into pieces so that you can see what it looks like. So this, dun 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 dun, is the bread. And it's so yummy, especially with some butter on it after you toast it, maybe even some peanut butter and jam, sometimes peanut butter and honey, some good combinations. It is so good and my favorite bread to eat every single week. Okay. So we were learning today about while we wait, we can remember what's true. And one of the things that we can remember and remember what's true is our memory verse for this month. So can we do it together? It says, wait for the Lord. Be strong and don't lose hope. Wait for the Lord. And it's found in Psalm 27 verse 14. Okay, let's do it one more time. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and don't lose hope. Wait for the Lord. Psalm 27 verse 14. We're learning that month or that memory verse all month long. And that is one verse that we can use to remember what's true. All right, it has been so great to be with everybody this Sunday, but let's close off our time praying together. Will you close your eyes and pray with me? Dear God, thank you for this story and for all that we can learn from it. Help us remember what's true. Help us to trust you instead of being impatient like the Israelites. Help us learn to wait until later for the things we want right now. Thank you for loving us and for being a God we can trust no matter what. We love you and we pray these things in your name. Amen. All right, I hope you all have a great week and I look forward to seeing you again soon. But challenge this week, maybe try making a loaf of bread. Super fun. And you'll have time to wait and learn to remember what's true during the times of waiting. All right, bye everybody.